for those uh, who I haven't had the opportunity to meet, it's uh, Kevin's guest, the Commission. Um, what I thought we'd do is uh, bring you up to date with uh, how the Commission's run. So, as you'll be aware, in February we released the tentative findings report. We kept that open for a period of five weeks to get community feedback. That period is now closed and we're in the process of uh, investigating the responses that we've received. We've had terrific responses, about 170 to date, and I guess I'd characterise the comments in three areas. Firstly, um, the issue of how do you prove that it's safe to store nuclear waste for these periods of time? A second issue is does this impact upon South Australia's correct, lean, very clean green image? And thirdly, the issue of the financial analysis. How accurate is it? To, does it to constitute something that South Australians can rely upon for the future? So we're in the process now of investigating all of those issues, and I'm happy to take questions. You said that uh, you've received 170 direct responses. What about the campaign ones that you received? Now we received about uh, 1,000 all up, and so I'd say probably 800 would be form emails, so expressing an opinion, um, but not really addressing the tentative findings, which is really the reason that I sent out the document of themselves, because I wanted to test the evidence uh, with the community to see what their views were. So are you discounting these? Well, I'm not discounting, but their opinions, their opinions are very important in the next step. But remember, what a commissioner's responsibility is to do is to answer the terms of reference with the evidence and present that to the government. Do you think that these people might be upset that that, that email they're essentially not going to be taking into consideration well, no, the final report? Well, what they're doing is expressing an opinion. What I'm interested in is the evidence, and I have to make conclusions upon the evidence that's provided. So, yes, I'm delighted that they send in their responses, but I can't use a, a document that says I'm for or against. What I really need is these are the tentative findings and what's the evidence that you produce uh, to either agree or disagree with what the tentative findings present. Commissioner, what specific um, answers are you looking for from the experts from Switzerland and Belgium? Well, what, we, um, what I wanted to do was to address this issue of how do you show that it's safe uh, to manage these activities over those periods. We'd spent a lot of effort in uh, Finland and Sweden, where the most advanced activities in, in crystalline rock. Um, a lot of South Australia that perhaps might be useful in the future for these sorts of facility has a sedimentary or clay basis. And so we went to Switzerland and Belgium, where they are very advanced in this sort of geology, to look at their rock laboratories, to understand the science, how are they presenting their information to prove that it's safe to do this over that period. So that's what we were attempting to do. And uh, in April, we will have two more open sessions that will address in depth the issues of how do you show that uh, managing waste for these periods of time is safe and how do you present that to the community. You, you, said, that, uh, you said earlier that you would be prepared to scrap the tentative findings and mm -hmm. the tentative plan if there wasn't more community support. Is that still your intention? No, no, that's not what I said. What I said was if the tentative finding documents uh, are proven to be based on poor evidence, then I would change the findings of tentative documents. Um, that's the process that I was opening up to the community. And that's the process that uh, we're now looking through those 170 submissions. What changes, if any, are we likely to see in the final report? Um, well, I think. At the moment, I haven't seen anything that changes the tentative findings themselves. I think the issue that uh, I'll be spending a lot of time on is the individual submissions, particularly in relation to the estimates of costs and revenues, uh, to address the specific issues that have been raised. But I haven't seen anything that changes the significant quantum of the numbers. Commissioner, talking of the economics in the press release you're saying one or two cases will add to the analytical work done to show what the impact of a change in circumstances would be on the potential benefits. Can you explain that a bit further, what cases you mean? And well, I think what we're talking about here is the cases of the, the various studies that have been conducted over 20 or 30 years 
to show the safety of storing waste in these particular types of geology. And what I hope to do in these open sessions is present the case of how other nations have assured themselves and their communities that it's safe to do this Both in that particular climate. Both now and into hundreds, thousands of years. Absolutely. Of it has to be over that full period. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of data that we saw in Finland and Sweden. There's equally the same amount of data in France, in Belgium, in Switzerland. And that's what we hope to bring out. Based on uh, your tentative findings and the fact that they don't seem to be significantly going to change um, going forward, do you think that it's inevitable that South Australia will in some way engage with the nuclear fuel cycle? No, I don't think it's inevitable. My job is to make some decisions based upon the evidence. And once that's concluded on the 6th of May, I present that to the government. The government decides whether it wants to take the next step. And I think, if you recall, the critical issue is social acceptance of what we are proposing to do. And the government needs to decide how it's going to embark upon that process. What I'm charged to do as a commissioner is to answer the terms of reference with the evidence, and that's what we will do. Based on, I know that you have said previously that you're not going to run some kind of a poll. But based on all of your consultations, do you think that there is significant opposition to the fuel cycle in South Australia? Look, polls are points in time. Um, it's very hard for me because I give the presentations, I get the questions to make an assessment of what the community view on this is. That's the next step of the process. It is very important. It needs to be done uh, diligently. I'm sure it will be if the government takes the recommendations. But I can't accurately assess what the views of the community are at the moment. What I'd hoped the tentative findings document did was present all the issues so that the community could think about what is going to come next if the government accepts the recommendations and that's to be engaged in the issues and understand more about the cycle. Commissioner, in the last few weeks of submissions you've received, does that give you more confidence or less confidence about how robust your number crunching has been? On, well, on perhaps more confidence us? because we've been challenged and I expected that we'd be challenged. People don't agree with us. I value the disagreement because it hones the arguments that we find is necessary to answer the terms of reference. Um, but at the end, my conclusions based upon physically going out there, talking with ministers for the nations, talking with institutions that are building these facilities, talking with institutions who have responsibility for the safety and the assurance of those uh, areas, talking with our professors here in Australia about the methodology that we use to assess performance. I'm comfortable and confident that we've got a process that indicates that there are significant benefits. And that's the best we can do now when we don't have a site, a facility, or a deed agreement. So it's an indication to the community, if you were to go down this track, we think there is a very positive outcome. Um, you shouldn't be seduced by that, because there are other issues that need to be considered. And if the government accepts the recommendations, that's the next process. But were those people who made submissions saying that you undershot or overshot your cost? Oh, there's a lot. Of, I think uh, there are institutions that said we've exaggerated. And as I've said to you, we've had world exports do these analysis. We've had our own university professors from ANU, from Adelaide, from Flinders University look over the methodology. Um, we've got a clean bill of health. Um, there are people who will express a view that it's exaggerated, um, but there's not a lot of evidence behind that. The evidence that we've provided, I think, uh, from my perspective, uh, at this stage, um, is conclusive, but we will be going through each piece of evidence that are given to us and assure ourselves that we're correct. And when you say exaggerated, the, the claims that they, mm -hmm. those submissions are made, does that are you talking about exaggerated the, the net benefits? Is well, that I think, what they're saying? I think, well, I think to read the uh, assessments, I think, yes, they're saying perhaps the benefits aren't there, uh, the costs have been underestimated. My view is that they are conservative, they were deliberately intended to be conservative, and uh, I, I'm at the point now where I've read the submissions, I've looked again at the financial analysis, 
I think there is an overwhelming benefit, and, uh, and but we still need to complete all of the work uh, to assure ourselves that that is the case. But there's nothing that I've seen in terms of evidence to suggest that uh, there isn't an overwhelming benefit to the community if we can do this safely. Are you able to tell us um, what exactly you will be changing for this final report? What, what areas well, are you looking We're looking at the whole tentative findings report. All of the 170 submissions and their recommendations, their observations, we'll be looking and matching against the tentative findings to see whether the tentative findings are still supported by the evidence that we received. And there are a few points which you might make some changes to at this stage? Oh, yeah, I think there are. I mean, there was a, there's a point uh, where we collected money uh, for the ongoing maintenance and, uh, and closure costs of the facility. We thought that the best time to do that would be 40 years. I think there are some indications from the community they'd like to see that earlier. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the financial modelling to, to look at that. But that strikes me as a very sensible option and uh, I think we'd probably pick that up. Uh, Commissioner, uh, I have a question regarding the financing of the Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed in last year's state budget papers that some additional funding was sought from the Federal Government. Um, can you explain uh, what that funding is for and what expectations the Federal Government has of that well, financial contribution? no part of the process of requesting any additional money for the Federal Government. Okay. So I'm, I'm, not, uh, not I'm not aware of anything that was done in that relation, okay. but I think I'll pick up your point, if I might. Mm -hmm. We need to work with the Federal Government in this process. Uh, it is not a South Australian solution. There are legislation changes that need to be addressed. We would need, if the government accepted the recommendations, to work very closely with the federal government in mapping out what might be needed to be done in the future. Thanks, guys. Is that it? Thank you. <clears throat>